So today we are going to be adding and subtracting fractions. Now kids often find adding and subtracting fractions kind of tricky because before you can add them you have to have a common denominator. Alright so the key to finding a common denominator is you have to think of a number that both 4 and 8 divide into. All right, and if you have trouble finding a common denominator, what you could do is over on the side, you could just start listing the multiples of the two denominators until you find one that they have in common. For example, 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. All right, there's the first five multiples. Now let's list the multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. But notice, they do have a multiple in common right here. They both have 8 as a common multiple. So that is going to be our common denominator. All right? So we're going to change both of these fractions into eighths, which is actually easy for the first one. The first one is st still going to be eight. It's already an eighths. All right? But it's the second it's that first one that is going to need a little bit of work. All right. So I know if I multiply the bottom of this fraction 4 times 2, I'll get 8. And if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 2, I also need to multiply the top of the fraction by 2 so that the fraction's value stays the same. All right? So this fraction now becomes 6 and 8. 6 eighths, because 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. And the other fraction, I'm going to keep the same because it's already in eighths. And check it out. Now I have a much easier fraction addition problem. 6 eighths plus 5 eighths. And if you add 6 eighths plus 5 eighths, how many eighths do you end up with? 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 eighths. And I can't simplify that, so that is my answer. Okay? Notice one more thing when you're adding fractions. When you have that common denominator, we add the tops, we add the numerators, but the denominator stays the same. Okay? Because 6 eighths plus 5 eighths gives us 11 eighths, all right? But the key to this whole thing is finding that common denominator. Let's do one more that's a little bit trickier. Take a look at this second one, 5 sixths plus 4 ninths. All right, so again, if you have trouble figuring out what the common denominator is, list the multiples. I'll start with 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, it goes on and on and on. For nines, 9. 18, 27, 36, 45, on and on and on. Do you see the common denominator? It's right here. Eighteenths. So we're going to have to change both of these fractions into eighteenths. And notice, neither of them are eighteenths now. So I'm going to have to change both of them. Okay? So, 6 times what gets me 18? 6 times 3. So I also need to multiply the top of this fraction by 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. So I've just changed 5 sixths into 15 eighteenths. Similarly, for 4 ninths, I need an eighteenths. 9 times what gets me 18? 9 times 2. So if I multiply the bottom by 2, I also have to multiply the top of the fraction by 2. 4 times 2 is 8. All right. So I've just changed this fraction addition problem into a much easier problem because look, now we've got our common denominator. 15 eighteenths plus 8 eighteenths equals how many eighteenths? 15 plus 8 is 23, so 23 eighteenths is my answer. And notice I can't reduce that. All right. So adding not too bad. It is a little tricky when you have to find that common denominator, but listing out the multiples really helps. All right, let's do some subtracting, because it turns out subtracting isn't that much different than adding. You still have to go through those exact same steps about finding a common denominator. The only difference is you subtract the numbers when you have that common denominator. Here, let's do two examples. 7 twelfths minus 1 third. All right, do you know the common denominator? If you're not sure, let's list out the multiples here. So the first one, the denominator is 12, so 12. 24, 36, 48, etc., etc., etc. For the second one, we've got 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, etc., etc., etc. 
All right. So do you see the common denominator? There it is, 12. So we're going to have to change them both to twelfths. And notice that first fraction is already in twelfths. So that one's easy. So it stays 7 twelfths. But we're going to have to change that 1 third into twelfths. So 3 times what gets me 12? 3 times 4 gets me 12. So if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 4, I also need to multiply the top by 4. 1 times 4 gets me 4. So 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths. And now I have a much easier problem to solve. 7 twelfths take away 4 twelfths leaves me with how many twelfths? Well, 7 take away 4 is 3. So 3 twelfths. And notice, I can reduce this, because 3 goes into both of them. 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 12 four times. So this answer reduces to 1 fourth. All right? Always be on the lookout to see if you can simplify your answers. On the other ones, I couldn't do it. 23 and 18, there is no number other than 1 that divides into both of them. But 3 twelfths, you can reduce it, because 3 divides into the top and bottom. All right, last one. Subtraction, 11 twelfths minus 3 eighths. Again, we need a common denominator, so let's see if we can figure it out. I'm going to list out the multiples of 12 again. We did it before, but I'll rewrite them again over here. Now, the other denominator is 8, so I'm going to start listing out the multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32. Do you see that common denominator? Right here. They both have 24 in common. So we're going to have to change these to 24 fourths. All right, let's do it. I know 12 times what gets me 24? 12 times 2 gets me 24. So I'm also going to have to multiply the top by 2. 11 by 2 is 22. So 11 twelfths is equal to 22 24 fourths. Now, for the 3 eighths, 8 times what gets me 24? 8 times 3 gets me 24. And so I'm going to have to multiply the top of this fraction by 3 also. 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 eighths is equal to 9 24 ths. And now this is a much easier problem. 22 24 ths take away 9 24 ths gives us how many 24 ths? Well, 22 minus 9 is 13. So 13 24 ths. Can I reduce this? No, 13 is prime. That's my answer. OK? So again, the secret to adding and subtracting fractions is you have to find a common multiple. OK? If you're having trouble finding the common multiple, list out the multiples of each denominator until you find the pair of numbers that are the same in each column. All right? Hopefully, you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also, subscribe, because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.